All right, so let's talk patrolling formations and different types and all that. So before we go into the formations themselves, um, we'll talk about the different roles of a fire team. So I'm going off of all Marine Corps doctrine. Um, this is now the outdated Marine Corps doctrine, but this is the way that you have your four-man fire team set up. And within your squad, you generally would have three four-man fire teams with a squad leader. But I'm just gonna focus on the individual fire team movements right now. So your first guy that you have is your ready. So he's your point man. He's the one that's in the front of all your formations and he's the one that's doing the route selection when you're actually walking. Uh, so, you know, if you're going through the woods, obviously you can't go in a straight line. So he's the one that leads the group and then is, you know, obviously looking out for enemies. Your team is your fire team leader. So he's generally gonna be the one in charge of the direction. So making sure that the ready is going in the right uh, direction as far as your azimuth goes. And then your fire is going to be your support gunner. So since we don't have automatic gunners and stuff like that or capabilities of, I mean, you might, but the fire can be a general support role. So the way that I like to think about it is that you can have it as your automatic gunner, you can have a guy with a 308, a guy with some sort of SPR, DMR for longer range, if that's something that your terrain allows. Or, you know, it could be like a drone operator. Anybody that can fulfill the role as sort of uh, bringing like a special tool to the, to the fire team. And then your assist is going to be your assistant to the fire. Um, so, you know, carrying extra ammo, tripods, batteries for drones, all that stuff, spotting equipment, whatever your fire is doing, he's there to help you out. And then he acts as an assist to the uh, team leader. So generally this is gonna be your guy that's kind of second in command behind your, your team. And then he can also focus on the pace count and all that if you're doing that sort of land nav. So this is the, the way that I'm going to organize all of the formations. So the first formation is going to be your column. Um, the Marine Corps only has one sort of column. I know that the Army does like columns where you're aligned and then they do staggered columns that are like this. The Marine Corps only really does this as a column. There's not really a time where you're going to have everybody in line unless you're just doing sort of like an administrative movement to the next port or the next point. So, um, you know, if you're doing range training or whatever and you need to go from, from one range to another range to do whatever you're doing next. Um, yeah, I mean, you're not doing like an actual patrol or anything, or if you're just going on a movement to start your your assault or whatever, and you don't really need to be tactical per se, where everybody's, you know, passing hand arm signals and being quiet and all that stuff. So this is your column. So essentially you have two lines where your guys are going to be aligned uh, or sort of covered down the, on the guy in front of them and then you're gonna be staggered, so that way you have uh, all your protection to the flanks. So in this case, you get your speed of movement, it's easy to organize, and then you're actually, um, all, all your support is, is to your flanks. So a case that this is a pretty good uh, movement is like going down a road where you, know, you, you might be able to see the road for, for pretty far, or if you're, you know, even if it twists and turns, you have guys that are always able to protect the flanks because if you take contact to this side or this side, everybody can turn and fire before getting online and doing your actual reactions to contact. So in this case, this is your direction of movement. Your ready is here, team, fire assist, or you can switch it to where your, um, you know, everyone's just swapped. So this guy's over here, this guy's over here, so on. So this is your column. Like I said, it's for good speed of movement and then protection to your flanks. So think about it, like if you're actually going up a road, so here's your road, here's your direction of travel. You got trees and brush and oh, all that stuff all over here. And then this is your road, direction of travel. Um, so mind you, you know, for all these movements while you're walking, every three to five steps, you're gonna wanna turn around. So this guy's gonna turn around check on him, check on him. And you know, you might not be able to see this guy 
or this guy because if you're spread out really far or if the terrain is real thick or if the road turns or whatever this guy isn't going to necessarily be able to see this guy or sometimes even this guy but he can see this guy and make sure that if there's a an arm signal a uh, hand and arm signal pass from here then when everybody echoes it you know he would do it this guy would see it echo it then this guy would see it echo it and then he would see it and then at that point everybody in your fire team will echo it to confirm that they know that that's being passed and then you'd carry out whatever that um that command is so a lot of the time your commands are going to come from here so this guy's got to see him and then this guy's got to see him but like i said these two guys don't need to be able to see each other um, generally the the hardest part about this formation is when you're just walking if you're looking at the guy ahead of you next thing you know this guy's getting closer and closer and closer up until he's you know next to him and the next thing you know you're, you're looking to your right and you got a guy there so the best way to do that is to align to the guy diagonal to you and he'd align to him he'd align to him and that way you can uh make sure that you're not all bunching together and grouping up the best way to check to make sure that your distance is good is kind of like how you're driving um, where if you need to maintain a three to five second distance from the, the car in front of you you pick out a point so say that this guy steps over a little stick and then or sorry if, if, if yeah okay let's say that you're the team and this guy steps over a little stick you continue walking and then you count you know 15 paces or whatever until you are passing over that same stick or you know you're in line with that stick that's the best way to make sure that you're doing the same the same distance and, and you could do it too with the guy in front of you if you really were good but I would always say uh, you know a line of the guy diagonal to you the next formation is going to be your file or your ranger file uh, it's pretty self-explanatory you're in a straight line so this is generally best used for real thick terrain like if you're trying to go through thick woods or you're going, uh, you know, traversing up a mountainside or, or whatever makes it to where you can't really spread out. Um, this is also useful for guys going through like minefields or where you don't want to leave a whole lot of sign behind that there's a lot of guys, right? If you travel single file, you kind of mask your, mask your numbers. So in this case, it's the same order, uh, ready team fire assist. Direction of travel is in this case up and then uh, you're just in a straight line. Same thing though, this guy doesn't need to be able to see this guy. You can be spread out pretty far. Uh, same deal where your strength is to your flanks because if you take contact from here or here, everyone can turn and fire on that enemy. Um, but in this case, you only have one guy that's actually able to return fire in you know, either your direction of travel or where you just came from. So either your assist can take contact rear or your ready can take contact front your team and your your uh your fire are not able to take contact front or rear so at that point you would need to spread out and do whatever so i'll get into that how to actually go forward with your reactions to contact but i'll probably have to do it a different way because i can't really draw like this i'm looking at the camera and it's all reversed it's weird so all right next formation is going to be the wedge so the army calls it a diamond because it is diamond shape but your wedge is a uh, marine corps term for essentially a diamond shape. So your benefit with this formation is that you get three guys that can cover in every direction. So if you take contact from over here, these three guys can fire, and then this guy just has to swing either to the front, or sorry, to the rear or to the front, and then uh, you get all four guys. So in this case, if you wanna use this, if you don't exactly know where the enemy is, um, or if you need all around protection for whatever reason. So if you're going through a real open area, you can go into a wedge, really spread it out. And, uh, you know, b before you get to the point of diminishing return on spacing, but you can spread it out. And then you have three guys that can cover in all directions. If you suspect that the enemy is on this side per se, your team and your fire can switch sides. So that way, if you're like, okay, we don't know exactly where the enemy is, but we suspect that they're over here because that's where we saw tracks before. That's where, uh, you know, maybe a drone saw enemies there or whatever. You can switch what side you're on, but no matter what, you're still gonna get three guys that can cover in any direction, you know, to your flanks, front or rear. 
The downsides of this formation are that it's a little bit harder to control, um, especially if you start going through real thick terrain and you need to kind of, you know, move back and forth to get around whatever obstacles, whatever natural obstacles, um, you know, because these guys need to be aligned and these guys need to be aligned. So making sure that you're able to control that is a lot more difficult than something like a column or a file where everybody's in a straight line and it's pretty, pretty easy to stay in, in their correct spot as long as you're in a straight line. You know the guy in front of you is, is where he needs to be and the guy behind him is where he needs to be. So that's one. So your echelon is kind of a two-part formation. You have an echelon left and an echelon right. Essentially what that is, is your echelon left is putting the majority of guys on the left side. Echelon right is putting your majority of guys on the right side. Your strengths in this are that everybody can react in all directions. Um, so why you'd use a right or left is where you want the majority of your fire to be. So if your guy here has a you know a heavier rifle like a 308 or some sort of dmr or whatever or if it's an actual automatic gunner rpk gunner whatever you want um you put that guy on the side where you want the most support so that way if you think that you're going to take contact to the left well you know your guy is closer to the left if you, want, if you think you're going to take contact to the right your guy's closer to the right so Obviously with this, it's a little bit more difficult to control as well since everybody's in a big, long, diagonal uh, movement because your actual direction of movement would be this way. So this is pretty good for, um, you know, once again, open area, or you can do this a little bit easier than a wedge in, uh, in thicker terrain, but it's not going to be as, um, quick if you're going through thick terrain as a wedge because with your wedge it's a little bit easier to stay organized but with this um you know you can still do it in thick terrain it's just a little bit harder to stay organized and then your speed kind of suffers for, because of that so the last one i'm going to go over is just a line it's basically a sideways ranger file so your direction of travel is this way and everybody is aligned to your left and right so obviously all your fires to your front or to your rear you have almost no coverage to your flanks you only have one guy that can actually respond to contact on your flanks and this would be a pretty applicable formation if you have you know say you have stuff here and then you have brush here you think that the enemy's there if it's all wide open here and on your sides or whatever so if you need to cross through like a real real wide uh danger area that's kind of linear um but you know it might not be perfect like a think of like a uh think of like crossing through a point that there's um uh like power lines or whatever so your power lines are going this way you have a real wide clearing you need to cross over and it's pretty easy to see that there's nobody in this direction or that direction you think that the enemy may be on the on the other side that you're going to be because that's where the most of the coverage is for for them um use your line and you cross that way so your speed can can be pretty quick um it's pretty easy to make sure that you stay organized because as long as you just stay aligned to the guy to your right and left you're good and um once again if you did want to you could swap where your fire and your assist are you know you could have this whole thing mirrored and you know keep the majority of your strength on on one one side or the other so because in that case like if you took contact to one of your flanks everybody would essentially just have to turn and you know be online be able and everybody able to fire down range so your fire and your assist can actually react to contact a little bit quicker on the side that they're on right makes sense so uh we'll go into linear danger areas next